Great eats and healthy living. Welcome to Test Kitchen Thursday. I'm excited. Who we have on here? Leslie. Hey now. Hi, sis. How are you? Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to start cooking. Leslie, you know love this, right? I know I love this. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining. Hopefully, um, some more folks in the Run Club will, uh, will come in and join us. But thank you so much for coming on. I'm so glad. It's been too long. I need to, I need to have you over for like some wine and key lime pie. Because I forgot. Did you think I forgot last night? But that's your favorite? It's a food thing. It's like a foodie thing. I don't know. It's a foodie thing. Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, you know, since you're first on, awesome, and I thank you so much. Um, let me know if you can hear me okay and if you can see me okay. Because I do have music in the background. Just let me, you know, just let me know if it's if it's too loud or what. Just let me know. Awesome. Leslie is letting the people know. Thank you, boo. We're going to wait a little bit longer. The stove is getting hot. I'm so excited about this recipe. I'm super excited about this recipe. Let me know if you can hear me okay and you can see me okay. Um, like I said, I do have music playing in the background. So and if you see me looking up and looking down, I have my laptop right here just to kind of make sure I'm doing like I'm supposed to be doing. Put it that way. And we are going to wait a few minutes, let people come on, culinary click and share. I'm so excited to be on that I'm gonna sit. Okay. Leslie, did you mention, can you hear me okay? You know, as soon as when you guys come on, just go ahead and drop and let me know that you're here so I can shout you out. Everybody's full love. Mommy, my dad's on here. I can hear you just fine. Awesome. The music is nice. Good. The, the glasses. Better to see you with my dear. You know, as, as we get older, not only do we get wise, we get blinder. <laughs> so I need these to see. Not necessarily up close, just more so far away. Hi, Mommy. Hi, mommy. My godmother is on. Hello. Hi, mommy. Mommy, I, you know what? I thought I would get you on here with this, um, what I'm about to test in the kitchen, put it that way. I'm about to do some um, some testing of some greens and some black eyed peas. You know, I'm gonna do it a little different. I'm gonna do it a little different. It's so good, it's super good. Great, you can hear me just fine. That's awesome. We're gonna wait at this time. Thank you, Leslie. I saw where you um you've already done so. But mommy, if you can, um uh, just let people know, hey, I'm on so we can get more people to join in on this here live. And I'm gonna get started probably in the next couple of minutes and we'll get started because I'm so happy that I'm able to do the test kitchen. Oh, awesome. Okay. On um, the test kitchen in 30 minutes now. So these recipes are not just good for you, are not just loaded with abstract spice. Well, not loaded, but you know, utilizing abstract spice. Um, but they're quick too. They're quick and easy, super easy. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, the caption is on there. Not sure why. But um, okay. That's fine. We're gonna give it a couple more seconds and then we're gonna come on and get started. I'm just gonna take a couple more sips of my Merlot. Mm. I can kind of talk to you guys about this now. Okay, so I'm gonna start um, actually posting some of my grocery hauls, not all together, but just some nice finds that I find at my stores that I love. You guys know the particular store that I completely adore and I'm there every single week and that is Aldi. Um, but Audi is like definitely stepping up their game and I am going to actually be utilizing one of these special finds 
uh, that I found at Aldi today as like a finisher, like a little topper. Welcome everybody who's joining, who's coming on. Be sure to drop in the comments that you are here so I can shout you out and give you all of the love and all the goodness and mercy. Yes, awesome mommy, I'm so glad. It's gonna be great. I'm really excited about this, but you know it's a test kitchen, so you guys get to be on here with me for the um, experimentation. Joski love, my boo. Hi, babe. Hi, my love. Thank you so much for joining. I think that you're going to like this one, too. Okay, if you guys see me looking up, looking down, it's because um, I had a laptop down here and everything. So, yeah, what I was saying is that I'm going to start actually posting some of the grocery hauls that I do, but it's more so the specific find on video, okay? Because I'm at Sam, I'm at Aldi, right? And I do a Trader Joe's every now and then. I do farmer's markets every now and then. Um, and I'll probably take you guys with me when I do some of the um, some of the farmer's markets when, the, you know, the weather breaks. Because today it was like 95 degrees. Okay, I'm fine. It's not 95. But it's like 80 degrees. It was 80 plus degrees today. And it was gorgeous, okay? So these are the times that I like to be outside, soaking up the energy, soaking up the body with me. Um, from the sun, but um, you guys are gonna go with me on the farmers market to see what I kind of pick and how I pick and why I pick what I do. Okay, so without further ado, welcome. This is Test Kitchen Thursday, and with ACR to Food, and ACR to Food is simply a culinary health resource that helps you eat healthier through lower sodium seasoning blends, my abstract spice, mindful custom meal plans, which not only help you to lose weight healthfully, but also also maintain that weight management, okay? So you're gonna maintain the weight that you are, because everybody doesn't necessarily always wanna lose weight. And then you got some people that wanna gain weight, okay? So but you wanna do that healthy. So it doesn't mean that if you wanna gain weight, that I'm just gonna get all the chips and the snacks and the cookies that I want to. No, it's a healthy way to do both. And I am here for you for that, okay? Consults, you can reach out to me, as well as healthy eating courses, okay? And cooking experiences. I do not call them cooking classes because they are cooking experiences because I am telling you the helpful benefits of the ingredients that we're using during the course, okay? So guys, without further ado, Test Kitchen Thursday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Test Kitchen Thursday is a little bit of time that I take out of your busy, busy week on my favorite day of the week, which is Thursday, because it's Friday. Who doesn't love Friday, right? Okay, so I take a little bit of time and I'm utilizing the abstract spice with something quick, easy, delicious, and utmost healthy for you, okay? So, all right, so we got love from Jerusky, my love, hello, hello, hello. And you know what I have not been doing since I've been driving by myself? Shannon is not here with me again. But I have not been able to show what's going on. So guys, that, you see this right here? This is what we're getting down with today. This. Johnny Cakes topped with kale, black eyed pea hummus, and shrimp. What in all of God's green earth, right? So here's the thing. Black History Month, absolutely. But I don't want to put such an emphasis on February being Black History Month because Black history is history, okay? So it's just up and throughout. So I've, you know, sprinkled in some of my posts throughout the month, you know, a little bit of Black history there, a little bit, back, uh, a little bit of Black history here. But what I want us to do is to understand why a lot of our culture is what our culture is, okay? So hence the Johnny cake, okay? So over time, you know how a rumor, like you whisper something and somebody's here, hi Dee, hi Darlene. Greetings and salutations. Okay, why can I put this on? I'm trying to do your, I'm, it won't let me do your um, your comment. I want to like do your, your comment, your post. Okay, there you go, I can do that now. So yeah, so a lot of times, you know how you, you know, say it, you whisper something, um, and then you know, the game you play, and then, you know, about five people down the line is completely different than, you know, what it started off to be, right? Okay, so that's the same thing with what we have down here with the Johnny Cake. So Johnny Cake is initially Johnny Cake. That's what it was, okay? So you know what a Johnny Cake is. Johnny Cake is simply like cornbread that is, you know, well, corn at that time. It was dried and it was milled. Okay, and pulverized into and add lard was added to it, um, water was added to it in order to fry it. Okay, and so when we were escaping during slavery times or just traveling on our journeys, this would be so easy to travel with. It was food staple. It was not. It was perishable, but it could last a long time for the journey. 
hence we get the name Journey Cake. But over time, you know how we do. Ebonic set in and we just, Johnny, them Johnny Cakes right here. Them Johnny Cakes right there. But it's actually Journey Cakes. And that is something actually that I taught uh, in some of our uh, healthy eating cooking courses, some of the um, the Cook with AC cooking experience when I did a High on the Hog series, but I was giving the history behind what we eat and why we do it, okay? So let me let you guys look down here at some of the ingredients that we'll be using today, okay? So what we're gonna start off with for our journey cake is a cornmeal batter, okay? And this cornmeal batter is simply, you know what? We're not trying to make things hard at all. You can absolutely get you a box of this baby right here. Yeah, Jiffy, Jiffy is your friend. You know why Jiffy is your friend? Jiffy is your friend because Jiffy's inexpensive. I'm gonna repeat, Jiffy's inexpensive. And it's okay to go that route with Jiffy because you know what? This is something that's quick and it's easy. You add an egg, some milk, and some oil, and you're cooking with gas, okay? Now, you can also get the cornmeal mix, okay? So I do have a recipe for your own cornmeal, uh, like your cornbread, because my dad, he, yeah, he does that stuff from scratch. That's the recipe that I usually use. Uh, but you can absolutely use the Jiffy, add a little oil, add an egg, and some dairy milk, we did add plant-based uh, plant milk, so it won't be dairy, okay? And you know what, just real quick, a lot of people confuse dairy and eggs. Have y'all noticed that? Eggs are not dairy, people. I know, I know, when you see categories and people put like dairy, no eggs with it. Nah, dairy is milk, eggs don't come with it. Okay, just, just a little reminder, because I had to be reminded of that myself a few years ago. It's just, it is what it is. But anyway, so this is dairy free. This is dairy free. So what we've done, we have that mix. But now that I have my stove, my stove top hot, we are going to take a little bit of oil and I'm gonna do a little bit of transforming over here and I'm gonna slide my good ingredients over to here. And I am going to get started with our stove top. Look at there, can you guys see that? Great, okay. So, we're gonna add a little oil to the pot. And guys, please, tell me if you need, need to slow down or what have you. Now, I did say kale. I said kale, but guess what? I decided to take a twist on from last week. Remember last week when we did the collard greens, right? Now, something that I did notice, and I'll pop you guys in for this one. Something that I did notice when we were testing that recipe with the collard greens, oh, oh, that I did notice with the collard greens was that it was a little, you know, it was tough. But that's what collard greens do, right? Wait a minute, guys. Here we go. Collard greens, you know, it's that texture. And that texture tends to be, you know, a little tough. And that's okay, all right? But how you get it to be a little bit more pliable is I chopped it up, okay? So I chopped up the collard greens, finely thin, okay? So I did this one. Look at that. Okay, so kind of like in shreds, okay? So when I put it in the stove, on the stove, it'll cook a little bit more through. And this way I can also keep the stems in because the stems, that's where the nutrients lie, okay? So I have, man, this pan is smoking, guys. It's smoking, so I'm just gonna throw this in. Okay, and I put a little grape seed in. This is roughly about two cups. Because you guys know what it's gonna do. It's gonna drizzle down, okay? Now, we're just going to add the greens and saute those, and you'll see they'll start to wilt down already, okay? And we're going to add a little seasoning, of course, the aspect spice. We have the aspect spice, look, the original. Now, if you want to spice this up, make a little spice, you can add the spicy, that would be a great accompaniment to it. It absolutely will. And these tins, guys, the spices don't come in the tins, but the tins are on sale at acrtofood.com. Uh, they're just five dollars. So you can get a tin, put your favorite one in, your favorite spice, and it's super convenient. And remember, it's a magnet too, guys. Okay, so this is not metal. Okay, that was not metal. Okay, yeah. Well, it's yeah, that's metal. See. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, okay. All right. So, yeah, I did too much right now. Okay, great. So, yeah, these tins are 
great. So I'm gonna season, I'm just gonna go ahead and season these collard greens. These are collard greens, you can actually do kale too, which is what the recipe states. Okay, so while we're doing this on medium high heat, okay, we're doing this on medium high heat. When you have your batter for your Johnny cakes, okay, or journey cakes, however you want to say it, hold on, for your journey cake, you want to go ahead and we'll take this batter, and I don't know if you guys can see this far, but can you see what I have going on over here? on the stove and it's just cornbread but what we've done we made it into a journey cake because it's easily to you know it's it's more portable it's more mobile when you have it in like a pancake form and this is what we're gonna put our black eyed pea hummus and our kale with shrimp this is shrimp we got shrimp off of it here y'all okay so at this time what i've already done it's taking my black eyed pea hummus. And I've done this, I did this, I wanna say the first week of the uh, of Black History of February. And this absolutely happens to be my brother, Tony Polo Jordan. This is one of his favorites that I made. So it's so nice and creamy. And all I did was take about a cup of black eyed peas, prepared black eyed peas. If you wanna do, am I, I feel like I'm If you want to do, you know, put it in the crock pot, slow cooking uh, black eyed peas, you can absolutely do that. I grabbed a can, I'm not even gonna lie, come on. I grabbed a can and I added two cloves of garlic and I added about a, a third of an onion, okay? So that's roughly about half a cup of onion um, and a little grape seed oil, which is a beneficial oil, okay? And I just blend it, add a little bit of water in order for the uh, blade to get around there, okay? So we already have this going on and it's great and you can just with tortilla chips any way that you do a regular hummus you can eat this but the great part about it is of all the beans that are full of fiber and full of antioxidants for your body um that the chickpea as well as the black eyed pea the only top two are the ones that are most potent in iron so if you're iron deficient amp up on your black eyed peas okay so let me get you guys back down here all righty so look at let's look at these greens these are these collards, these here collard greens that we chopped up a little bit more finely and we did that so it will cook a little bit more thoroughly and that the tough leaves, because they're very, very dense green leaves, we did this so that they can cook a little bit more thorough, okay? So regardless if you're getting chopped greens, you know, just take a knife, run them through on a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of water, okay? I'm adding a little bit of water because that's going to add a little steam to it and it's going to help with the cooking process too. It's not going to take any of the flavor away. None of the flavor away. Okay, can I get a check? Does everybody see me well? Everything's going copacetic? We doing good? We doing good? Awesome, awesome, awesome. And there ain't nothing, there's nothing wrong with gypsy. Mommy, I see you laughing because you know we do cornbread from um, from scratch. Alrighty. So I'm gonna take these greens because that's important. And every step you want to take a little bite to see how you're doing, to see if you need a little bit more seasoning. Mmm. Hmm. Those are already tender. Very, very tender. But they need a little bit more seasoning. Because you know what else? Those greens add that bite. But I have something for that. It has a little of that bitter bite. But we're adding a little bit more of the abstract spice. And this is the regular. And like I said, you can add this, you can add the spicy. I still have some more greens on. You can add some of the spicy to get a little kick, which would be great. Awesome. Thanks, Leslie. Appreciate that, baby. All right. And so see, it's not going to take that long at all. Now, the piece of it is it's stone because I wanted to put this here to make sure the, um, the texture of it got a little bit more tender, and it did. This is a great texture. Now, I have my shrimp. This is roughly about a cup of shrimp. 
Okay, and the reason why I'm going to add this last is because it does not take shrimp a long time to cook at all. Okay, so I'm throwing the shrimp in, and sh the shrimp is going to take about it's not going to take a long time, but I'm going to show you guys. You see how it's looking? It's real pale, right? But when it starts to turn pink, is when we are cooking with gas. I don't know what my, I don't know. <laughs> all right. And so we're gonna cook this all the way through, but we are also going to do a little seasoning. We're gonna do some layering of seasonings, right? So we're gonna do, this is abstract spice, but I have, this is the lemon, salt, and pepper. Because it's shrimp, I'm gonna add a little bit of that for a little zest. So we have the bite from the collards, but then we have a little zest and that fresh cracked pepper from the lemon salt and pepper, okay? And the heat, and you'll start to see the shrimp turning pink, okay? All right, while well, that's getting a little bit more heated. Do I have any questions? Are there any questions? Do I have any questions? Girl, Terrica, let me tell you something. The goodness and mercy that's about to go down. Yes. Okay, so here's a cornbread. So usually when you're making a journey cake, this is the exact same batter that you would use to make cornbread, okay? There is no difference. It's just a difference in the shaping of it. So whereas you have in a pan, you have to bake it, right? So think about it. When you're on the go, the last thing you want to do is wait for the oven to get hot enough and then put something in there to make it bake for like, what, 30 minutes at least, like a cake. So journey cakes were created because you could just get on some hot coals, anytime, you know, start a fire, pour it on there, flip it, and you're good, and you're gone, okay? So our ancestors left us with this awesome, amazing utilization tool that we can have on the go, convenient, and we can still use it as of today, okay? So that's an awesome thing now in history. Now, I usually make, like I said, I usually make cornbread from scratch, and it's my dad's recipe. Okay, he's a country boy. He's a country, and that's yeah. It, it, he's a country boy. So he is probably my grandmother's. Um, that's probably her recipe. But it's nothing like some good hot water cornbread. Oh my god, this is too so. And I can eat that by itself. Like while they sit up here feasting on neck bones and chitlins and whatever for the holidays, I just go ahead and take my cornbread with some of the black eyed peas and the greens. And it's so. And the thing about it is, when you think about it. You have, you know, the journey cake is what it was carried on. Then we're talking about the black eyed peas. And this is just an African-American culture, right? We have the black eyed peas that usually in the beginning of the year for New Year's. We're like, oh my gosh, but you have to have black eyed peas and green. And it's for luck, okay? The peas are for luck. And I gave a little history on that last week about how um, black eyed peas became lucky during the Civil War. And what happened is that the Northern soldiers did not see fit for black eyed peas to be um, consumed by humans, okay? It was more for your livestock, it was more for the animals, right? So they left them, when the war was over, after the Civil War, it was over, they left the black eyed peas, and it was the luck of us, okay, uh, the African Americans at that time, to find these and come upon this, you know, bountiful amount of black eyed peas because the Northerners had left them and say, hey, it's lucky that we found these um, provisions to go ahead and feast on for the new year. And that's exactly what happened. And then when you have the greens, come on, everybody like a little green, what is that? Money, 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 ah, money, 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 money. Okay, question. Mm. So I can make cornbread from scratch to be gluten free. Mm -hmm. But fry it up like a pancake, absolutely. You, all of that. All of what you just said, Leslie. Let me put Leslie's question up here. Leslie, that's a resounding yes. That's a resounding yes. Okay, so guys, let me show you now. And let me get the comment down. Let me show you guys now. I'm gonna take this banner off too so you guys can see fully. Look at what we have on here. Look at this. Do you see how the shrimp have started to curl. That's when you know 
that they are ready. And I like the fact that when we chop up the greens, that it gets kind of like a little parsley effect. It gives a fancy effect. You would not think the depth of flavor that is about to go down in your mouth from these collars, it kind of looks like it's parsley shrimp, doesn't it? Okay? Yes, it looks like parsley shrimp a little bit. So, I am going to taste. I'm going to taste with my cook. One of a, you know, type of grilled shrimp. You see that? I said I was going to do one before, you know, ahead of time because I never get the pics. I never get the pictures. I don't. So if you guys can screenshot and take some pics, that would be great. Hi, Angel! Hi, neighbor! <laughs> How are you? Okay, so we're going to give that lemon is everything. That's good. Okay, so we can go ahead and turn this off. Mm. Are you guys ready? I think I need to take a sip. Nobody said take a sip, but okay. Mm. Let me see, mommy. Did you add anything additional? I'm gonna put this question up here. Did you add anything additional to the Jiffy before you made the pancakes? No, um, just follow the box instructions. I added an egg. Actually, I contemplated if I was gonna add an egg or not because I didn't want it to rise as if it was in the pan. I just wanted it to be um, easy, but I feel like the egg would also add a lot of fluffiness to it, even though it's in a pancake form. So I did add an egg. I just followed the um, instructions. It's an egg, a little bit of milk, and a little bit of oil. I added grapeseed oil. So this was a you know way that I could benefit, well, add beneficial ingredients to it. Make my own. Y'all like these glass? Isn't this a slick glass? This glass is everything. I think it was, I think this was 12-0. What's that for? Mm. I'm sorry, I get scared away. Okay, great. Now let's start to play. Because we've already, like I mentioned beforehand, we've already got together our black eyed peas and we just put it in a blender, okay? So what I added was a cup of drained and ranched. That means ranched. Ranched all black eyed peas, okay? And we added two bowls of fresh garlic. I believe in the fresh, okay? I believe in the fresh, unless we you know we just quickly season this up and keep it moving. But when you can, at all times, always try to get fresh. So you can see me. Okay, great. It's, hi, Angel, did I speak to you already? Hi, neighbor. Hello. Okay, so we just added a can of the black eyed peas, ranched, 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 and drained. Two cloves of garlic. I added half a teaspoon of abstract spice rose sea salt. We don't need the abstract, the full body, full depth of flavor. We don't need that for what we got going on here. And also it has an onion. So this right here, you may ask, usually I'm cooking, every time I cook, I'm gonna cook with some onions. I'm gonna cook with some type of garlic. I'm always gonna do that, but I didn't have to do all of that here with our shrimp and collards. I didn't have to do that because all of that's gonna be in here and we're gonna be layering the plate, okay? So let's start layering. I have my plate. I'm really excited about this. This is gonna be so good. Okay, I have my plate. I have a delicious Johnny cake. Look at that. It looks just like a pancake. It looks just like a pancake, okay? And I'm gonna bring you guys down here. I'm gonna push this out. Y'all have any other questions? I got yours left. Maneuverability. Any other questions? And you know, this is something great that you can make if you have people coming over. I know the outside is open up. You can actually make these smaller and like little quarter, I wouldn't say even they're like um, quarter size, but like maybe, what is that? Maybe two inches, two, three inches in diameter. And you know, you can make like little mini pools, something really cute like that. That would be great, okay? That would be super great. What'd you say, mommy? Uh, you never, never use grape seed oil, but does it have a different flavor and taste and work well with everything? It's universal, okay? Grape seed oil, and the reason why I like to use grape seed oil is because it gives me a little bit of versatility um, from always using, say, like a canola oil, which I use very, very seldom, or a regular olive oil. 
because olive oil and a grapeseed oil as well as your avocado oils are your high smoke point oils. So if I'm cooking things for a long period of time, if I'm roasting some things of that sort, I like to put that on there. It has a nice uh, fruity flavor like you would get from an extra virgin olive oil, but not as potent which is why it's great for cooking and it doesn't it's not going to um, affect too much about um, the flavor of your dish it's not going to affect that too much and it's beneficial it has you know great omegas in it but not only that but it has um the um anti-inflammatory properties as well by it being an oil how long does the hummus last last i think you meant last hummus the hummus is going to last you i would say a good five days a good five days because it's non-perishable. There's no dairy or anything. Well, it's not non-perishable. I'm not saying that. It's a bean. The bean itself, you know, can be in the can for the longest. But as long as you store it in the refrigerator, it's preserved. You're good. You're absolutely good. You're absolutely good. Okay, guys. So let me take you down here. Let's start to plate this bag. All right. So we have our Johnny cake. So excited about this. Okay. And it's going to be pretty. I already know it's going to be pretty. I already know it's going to be pretty. Okay, so let's get situated. Okay, can you guys see this? Let me take the comment off. So we can see the whole tape. Oh, yeah. Let me take my... Okay. Can I... Do I have to show it? It's making me show me, guys. So don't worry about it. Okay. We'll just do it like this. Okay. So then I'm going to take about a, a, a spoonful uh my black eyed pea hummus and just spread it on okay if you want more this stuff tastes so good by itself trust and believe and it's super easy guys what are we looking at we're right at 7 30 and we're done great 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 and now i'm going to take some of this goodness and mercy Ooh, even some of the juices are on there with the shrimp look at that look at that it's outside of the box guys this is critical thinking I learned it in grad school. Look at that. How amazing does that look? I'm gonna add a couple more shrimp. Look at that, all right? Now, if that doesn't scream soul food with a twist, I don't know what does. You guys see that? Here we go. So we have our Johnny cake, which is going to add a little sweetness already, okay? Because it's a corn, it's a cornbread um, mix that instead of putting in a pan for rising, we, we fried it on a skillet, okay? We just poured it out like regular pancakes. Let me see. Okay. Just like a skillet, okay? And then we blended, okay, a cup of prepared black eyed peas with two cloves of garlic and about half a cup of onion for that punch and it's going to give it some flavor and we did add about a half a teaspoon of extract spice rose sea salt all of this can be found on acrtofood.com okay and then we did our collars now remember for the integrity of the collars for us to be able to enjoy it like we need to and like an appetizer such as this, okay? Or a main meal, whatever, it's got all you need. We chopped it up finely. Like there's a, I believe in working smarter, not harder, okay? So I'm not necessarily, unless I have to, and I can, don't get it twisted. I'm from the South, I can get, get down. I will take the leaves of the collars and get them off of the stem, wash them, okay? In the sink, do all that. But I don't have to if there's already a bag of chopped and triple clean uh, greens. Still rinse them off too, right? But they're already in strips. Go ahead and chop them up because that's what we did. That's why we have this texture, okay? That is really. Can somebody get a, a, a shot of this? D, if y'all still on, get a shot of this and send it to me. Because I can't do that. I can't do that. And it just looks really, really good to me, right? I'm just, if I want to. Okay, hopefully somebody took that. Okay, so we chopped that up because the, the kale greens, just like um, the collard greens, is, is they're a very, very um, tough root, okay? So they're very dense and not as pliable so like the spinach. Like the spinach is very, um, is a bit, I won't say meat, but it's very thin, okay? And so these, 
the, the, the leaves of a kale and the collard are more tough. So in order to get that cooking cut down, right, to make it easier, working smarter, not harder, we chop them up a little bit more, even more fine. So instead of the strips, we chopped it up fine, okay, in order to cook in at least amount of time. And we did that, and we mixed that in with some little shrimp. We got, these are medium size, and I did not get the large because I wanted to fit onto the Johnny Cake, okay? Awesome. And this is what we have, the black eyed pea hummus. We spread that on as a topping. Top this, and now I'm about to get down with a get down because that's what you're eating already, right? In the soft food, that's what you're eating. You're eating the cornbread, you got to get the greens, beans, and cornbread, and then the and then the greens, and that's what you're doing. But I'm getting ready to take a bite. I'm gonna see if y'all got some comments. Y'all got some comments here. I can hear you just fine. I'm like, okay, wait a minute, wait, wait. It's so good. Okay, how is it with Vaca Mama? You ain't say a Oh my god, all right. Hi, Cassandra. You joined me, yay! Okay, so I'm gonna take a bite. Mm. Oh my God. Y'all, that's money. That is money. That's money. I tell you, first of all, when I put it in my mouth, the sweetness from the Johnny Cake, is super good, okay? It's super freaking good. But then the punch that you get from the black eyed peas with that garlic and that onion, but then it's smooth and crunchy, right? Along with the with that cornbread, and then you get that bite from the pollen and the shrimp, the shrimp, this is magic. Now, and you know, I'm always talking about a contrast of flavors. Now, what you can do, and I, went, I, I mentioned beforehand about the pomegranate syrup, where I'll talk about a, um, a balsamic glaze. And I know a lot of people may get a little confused with that. Now, it is not to be confused with balsamic vinegar. Can you guys see? Balsamic vinegar is just that. It's fermented vinegar, okay? And it may have like the grapes, you know, for the flavor. So it's very, very loose. The glaze, however, and this is my trusty pomegranate syrup. And look, all these now, all these, go check it out. And this was, um, I want to say this was $2 and some, no, maybe it was $3. But this is a balsamic glaze, y'all. This is a glaze with strawberry and balsamic vinegar. Okay. And then this is my trusty um, pomegranate syrup, which I love. But the syrups are going to have a little bit more sugar in them and they're going to be a little bit more concentrated. Okay. So this is when you, this is perfect for like, when you have Brussels sprouts and you're roasting Brussels sprouts with your extract spice. My God. When you have that, when you just want to drizzle, glaze, this is what you use. You do not use the balsamic vinegar. It's going to be too tart. This is going to add a level of sweetness to it. So guys, this is what I'm going to do. I'm about to do it. I'm about to drizzle some of this pomegranate syrup because it's going to cut some of the bitterness. Ooh, ooh, yes. I, see I did the vinegar. Somebody, can y'all get a uh, shot of this right here? Cause I'm about to tear into it. I promise you. I promise you I'm about to tear into it. That blaze goes like that. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Let me bite it with this. Let me just see what it is. Let's make it do what it do, baby. Mmm. Woo! Let me tell you what that does. Oh my God. That's the winner that pomegranate and I'm sure it's probably just as good with the strawberry oh wow yeah y'all need to do this highly recommend it so what I've been doing this recipe will be next week when I do I don't know if you guys have noticed but I've started to post recipes weekly okay with the blog post it's usually like a FYI type blog post that I have mm. this is so freaking good um so yeah, but this recipe will be up and available next Wednesday, okay? But right now, if you guys can follow along, because I want you to make it your own. You always make it your own. But I want to combine the best of our culture, the foods of our culture. You know what? If you want to make it vegetarian, vegan, even, omit the shrimp, that's fine. 
I would even chop up maybe some like some mushrooms. You could always do mushrooms. You could do the sweet potato. Do a sweet potato on top of this for a sweet contrast as well in that texture. Um, you could do eggplant. You could roast some eggplant and put that on here. Tofu, you can, but if you're trying to stay away from soy, the vegetable options are going to be the best bet. You can make, I wouldn't say broccoli, because broccoli, I mean, they're from the same group, but I wouldn't necessarily do the same with those. But guys, this is freaking amazing okay it is the best use of what we you know consider our culture and our comfort foods okay and i'm salivating I'm salivating that's amazing yeah i'm feeling like a spring get together in my backyard with this and some wine so let me just go through these questions real quick. Because guess what, guys? I have gone a little bit over, but that's okay. But we're done. Mommy, I'm sure it's excellent with vodka. I'm absolutely certain about it. Okay, guy Pierre, you are so funny, Mommy. Okay. Yeah, Brussels sprouts are on my menu for tomorrow. Awesome, Mommy. Check out all these see if you can find one of these glaze. I know you already got some glaze. Because I get my gourmet foodie from you. <laughs> So guys, thank you so much for joining for another Test Kitchen Thursday with AC of AC Art of Food, where we're a culinary and health resource helping you eat healthier. With our line of lower sodium seasoning blends, it's six of them. It's the original signature blend. It's the lower sodium. It's the spicy. It's the abstract rose sea salt, which you just want a little hint of flavor with your sea salt, okay? With your rose sea salt, Himalayan. And then we also have our lemon salt and pepper and lemon low salt and pepper, okay? Those blends. We have all of that. We have healthy snacks. We have nuts. We have abstract spice roasted health nuts that are like amazing. They're insane. And they're the perfect size for the healthy snacking. As well as maple nut spice granola that use the abstract roasted health nuts, okay? So it's all good and good for you. I make it delicious. That's what I do. We also have our healthy eating courses that you are free to sign up for. They're not free, but you can sign up for it as well as consults. So maybe it's something that you don't want to delve into deep, but you want to talk to AC Art of Food about, go ahead and to acartofood.com and schedule on the services. You can schedule a consult with me, okay? We also have that awesome, amazing blood type session that's in three parts. It's a three-part session, and it is so loaded with the information that you need. They're going to help you to move better eat better, and just feel better and be, okay? So all of that you can find with ACR to Food on acrtofood.com. Follow me, me on all social media at ACR to Food. And guys, until next Thursday, great eats and healthy living. And thank you for joining me again for another Test Kitchen Thursday. See you next Thursday at 7. Bye.